Okay. So you're still doing your prison time. And, you know, being a DC guy, from what I understand in prisons, you know, I mean, there's the gang ties and so forth, but usually the cities kind of stick together, right? Exactly. How was your time in DC in, in prison with the DC crew? I mean, were there situations where there was wars and, and so forth that you guys had to deal with along the way? It's always, yeah. It's always, if you're from D.C., it's always uh, going to be situations in prison. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, just like every state knows that they know how hard D.C. go. You know, they don't they don't want that shit. But if it comes, then, it, but it was situations, exactly, um, all the time. So, yeah, that's what, that's what. What do you think was the most serious situation you got into in prison? Well, not me personally, but I'm just saying just D.C. in general, there's a whole lot of stuff that, that happened, man. You know, some shit can happen down the hallway. Some shit can happen in the unit right there, you know, with you. Um, but I've never been that, that basically that kind of guy with that prison shit, man. That shit, is, it gets you no money. It's, it's you know, sometimes if something is, is unavoidable, then it's unavoidable. But, you know, just a lot of shit with the prison shit, really, it ain't worth shit in my opinion, for the most part. So that was something that I, you know, uh, shied away from a lot. Um, especially was, if there's no money involved, if that's what my thing was at the time, if there's no money involved, uh, that's, that shit is, is, is frivolous to me, you know. But shit always happened. But most of the shit that happened in prison is about small shit, dumb shit, man, in my opinion, you know. And, yeah, that that, that wasn't my, uh, my thing, man, you know. Uh, so... Yeah, but a lot of things happen, man. But that don't always mean that you personally involved because it happened. Um, uh, even if you know, even if, it, if if even if it is your city, you try to give your two cent. Sometimes you try to mediate shit, and sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't, and sometimes you got to back away and let it happen. And, and and that's what it is. You know, a lot of people I spoke to that have done prison time, they talked about the prison rapes. And they talked about how sometimes the younger dudes would come in and the older dudes would basically gang rape them and, and so forth. You yourself, did you see this type of thing happening in prison? No, I was never around that shit. I never, you know, I never saw what happened. You know, I've heard of some shit happening, but I never, you know. And most of uh, most of my D.C. homies, man, you know, we're not going to let that shit happen, not, not to none of us, you know. And sometimes not to... Others, if we are present and we have, you know, we see it or whatever. But I've heard some things, man, you know what I'm saying? But no, nah, that, that shit is, yeah, I don't know much about none of that. You know, yeah. Well, after Rayful cooperated, your son went to go see you. And I guess he was around 16 years old at the time. And you guys actually talked about the whole Rayful uh, cooperating situation. Right. And I guess that was only the second time he actually got to go see you. So, uh, how was that meeting like? Um, you know, he uh, he had questions. You know, as a sixteen year old, um, you know, um, Rafael was somebody that he, you know, really, you know, looked at as you know, as a family member. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it really affected him what he did and what the 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 ver reverberations from it and the fact that. I had on him a uh, uh, whole lot of people in our, our in our area. So, um, and he had questions about how he wanted to proceed, you know, concerning that. And, uh, you know, as a father, you got to deal with that and try to enlighten your, your child, protect your child, you know. Um, and uh, that's what our conversation was just somewhat about that. It wasn't no long conversation on that. We had a lot of other things to talk about, but... Um, yeah, we discussed that. We discussed, you know, Rayful and, um, you know, and we had to, you know, we had to deal with um, dad's situation and, 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 and his situation um, growing up without his dad and growing up on the same block that I lived on. It just so many, you know, other situations that, the, that a young teenage uh, uh, boy deals with growing up. So not just, and then with him being Tony Lewis Jr., same, same name, same everything. So, yeah. Yeah, we discussed that shit briefly, and man, just got some pointers, and he got some knowledge on it, and uh, yeah. 
And then I learned some things that I ain't, didn't know about, like these phone calls shit and and I'm grateful calling way more than I knew and just different, just different little things, yeah. So yeah, we, we talked about that. Well, your son who has the same name as you, right? You know, except for except for Junior, he actually right. has like father, like son tattooed on his arm, right? But unlike his father, he decided to go a different route. Exactly. And by 2010, he started an organization called Sons of Life, right? Tell me about that organization. Oh yeah, man. Uh, my son, uh, he has made me so proud of him, man. So. That's what kept me going, actually, man, uh, uh, to see his accomplishments and to see the difference in him. Not so much to see the difference in him and me, because as human beings and as men, we the same through and through. But to see his direction, which was different from mine, and to see how serious he was uh, about his community, about his city of Washington, D.C., his commitment, you know, to the younger people and him taking my lesson of my criminal life and my uh, incarceration and using that in a different way, man, you know what I'm saying, to uh, affect change in our community and our city. And uh, I, I'm just the proudest father in the world, always have been from back from, I say, 2007 when he really be, got, got, got his prominence, man, you know. So just the great things that he do, that, that helped help me every day, man, with motivating me, man, in prison with all the nonsense and uh, – you know, the negative shit that I was around every day in prison. So, uh, yeah, man. And, uh, you know, uh, his, that, that, uh, Sons of Life and now his, uh, nonprofit or what he's a part of a nonprofit, DC or nothing with, with the wonderful Miss Angel Gregorio, him and her, man, they just been so, so amazing to the young people and just returning citizens or former incarcerated people in our city. Uh, yeah, man, just just amazing, man. And now for me to be here and be a part of that and be a part of my son, I'm, I'm just, I'm just it's my second life, man. I'm, I'm back, you know, I'm back from the dead. So yeah, but it's all about my son, man. All about him. 